Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Sitting next to me, Janine McDonald, uh, rather from the uh, from Spore, the executive director there. And uh, this is an incredible organization, and I'm really excited to have you here to talk about it today. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I'm a pleasure. Well, so tell me a little bit about the, the basic mission. I, there's a lot of people up here in Park City, and certainly even some in Salt Lake who have no idea what SPORE really is all about, but you have a very unique uh, mission. Sure, yeah. We do uh, outdoor adventures for people with disabilities and disadvantages, and we do river rafting down in Moab. Um, along the Colorado and Green Rivers, and then we do a whole host of programs, year-round programs up here out of Salt Lake, um, up in the big and little Cottonwood Canyon. We go rock climbing, cross-country skiing, and then we canoe along the Jordan River and up on local reservoirs. So a bunch of different things all over the state of Utah. Really great. And, and these activities are meant to, uh, to kind of bring together both able-bodied and people who have, have other challenges to be able to do these activities together, is that right? Absolutely, yeah, it's inclusive. What we feel like sets us apart is really that our trips are inclusive. So we want mom and dad and your uncle and aunt, your cousins, your friends to come out on the trip. And we realize that we're not really providing any great service by just providing a canoe trip to people with spinal cord injuries or people, youth um, with, from refugee families and that really the power comes from being inclusive and people from all walks of life coming together and that bonding that happens right. on, an, on a t camp out or a river trip is pretty powerful. I mean certainly there's you know there's organizations and I'm sorry for the we have a little bit of a fly problem here That's today. Okay. Uh, there's certainly a lot of organizations that focus on bringing people with common uh, needs and common uh, allergies as far as their disabilities are concerned and that certainly is an opportunity for them to to uh, have that uh, you know the chance to to mingle with other people who have that and to grow together but this is different in that um, it's the thing that, that pulls us together it says hey we are all the same we all get to do these we can all participate in these activities that's a little different isn't it right and I don't want to discredit that either that getting people oh for sure you know, to have that experience where yeah. wow we're in the same boat and yeah because really it's super relate. important right but there is also this real need for families um, we hear from parents over and over you know this was the first family vacation where um, so and so or Tommy you know didn't ask to go home immediately or this was the first time that <laughs> you know Sally has gotten positive reinforcement in doing something that was athletic or physical right. you know up rock climbing and I think that's really important for siblings if you have a sibling with a disability to see them excelling at something that's got to be positive for your relationship Absolutely, that's really cool. Well, you guys have a, an interesting one, uh, uh, kind of an interesting theory here, dignity of risk. Explain that to me a little bit. Yeah, that is an idea that I came across maybe a year and a half ago. And this idea that and it applies to all of us, but that a huge component of living what we call a full and robust life is doing things that are a little bit risky. <laughs> I and, love this theory. Right, and it's it's uh, and that you know when you look back, well, me personally, like some of my favorite memories are going on family rafting trips, and that right. photo we have of us going into the giant wave, and when right. Grandma looks at it, she's like, "Oh my gosh," you know. Yeah. Um, or you know that time that you're going down the double black diamond, and it was like, "Oh gosh, I'm I in real I trouble here." It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but that after those experiences, reflecting on it, it's like I made it through, and you have this great memory, and often the sense of empowerment as well. Like, wow, I can, I can do it, and. Yeah, I love this because it, it kind of uh, my I have a parallel theory. Um, that is sort of, and I have a kind of a little bit of a fear of death, like on a general basis, right? That, you know, if it's gonna end someday, and that, you know, we all have to face that, right? Right. Um, but I always feel like I'm much more alive, and that, and that is further away, that time in my life is further away when I really put it on, on the line a little bit. Mm -hmm. When I take it right to the edge a little bit right. on my own. And I think that that's, that, that is kind of a parallel thoughts that it's just it's very empowering to know that you control your destiny for a moment right right yeah and, the, and there's a thrill there yeah I mean absolutely. there's a reason why you know we like to go fast either either in our cars or you know down the ski slope or 
whatever it might be. So how does that further your mission when you when you're dealing with that? You know, when when you start playing with the dignity of risk. Yeah, I right. Love, I love the way you put that. Uh, it well historically. People with disabilities were either put into homes and let's hide them away, right. you know. And then as it's become, you know, no, let's, you know, these people deserve. Um, people with disabilities deserve the same life that all of us do. There was still this idea for many years of sheltering someone with a disability, and you know, if you have a developmental disability, then you know, let's have a care provider take right. you around from spot to spot. And certainly, you know, everyone has different needs, but this idea, dignity of risk, has come out that all of us, regardless of if there's a developmental disability or you use a walker to get around, um, and yes, you may need um, some extra support in doing certain activities, sure. that we all crave that, that thrill and that excitement uh, and that feeling of living life challenging yourself and right we all need that regardless yeah. of you know what our experience has been or what our ability level is oh, I really like this and so we try to provide that in a way that's you know we manage the risk for people um, and we really work to take we do have you know certain sections of river where the water the rapids are pretty extreme you know, we have certain requirements for people coming on that trip. You know, you have sure. to be able to swim back to the boat, aid yeah. in your own rescue. But for the most part, we try to find a way that we can take someone down the river that is at a good challenge point for them, um, or on a ski trip, or on a rock climbing trip. And I think that is a, that's a service in and of itself, and really gets back to Swore's mission, is that we wanna see people walk away from our trips feeling like, oh my gosh, I can do this, and I can do a lot more than I ever thought I could, and that it's not that they have to keep coming back to explore, but that hopefully we're a catalyst for them doing more to get out in a little on their own even. Yeah. You know, I, this must be an enormous undertaking for you guys to be able to, to go to so many different venues and so many different activities. How do you do it all? It's actually, um, we operate much like a typical outfitter. Really? Um, where people okay. show up for the trip and we have boats and, and really a lot of working with people with disabilities or disadvantages even is having cultural sensitivity, um, being patient, things are gonna take maybe a little bit longer. Right. Um, being really, you know, being people's number one cheerleader and anxiety is something we run into where I think we all experience anxiety when we're trying something new, but then sure. if you're in a wheelchair and you have to rely on people, you know, for a two night camping trip on a river that you've never been on, I mean, That's there's gonna be, That's a lot right? in someone else's hands. And it takes a lot of trust. And so a lot of it's relationship building, you know, soothing or assuading people's fears. And, uh, and then we have some uh, physical, you know, adaptive equipment that we use but really it's mostly the soft skills. Yeah, so it's really not logistics. It's like you said, it's more people. Right, skills. it is, wow. absolutely. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, how did the, can you give me the history of, of Splore? Uh, our founder, Martha Hamm, in the 70s, she was studying at the U and did an internship out in California for a similar organization called ETC, and they're still around. Uh, and they do river rafting on the American River in California. And she came back to Utah and was like, we have all these amazing natural resources here in the state of Utah. Why don't we have organizations doing similar things for people with disabilities? Mm -hmm. And so she got together with Ken Slight um, down in Moab, who's um, uh, one of Edward Abbey's, they rumored to be one of Edward Abbey's characters really? um, from the Monkey Wrench Gang. Wow. And he uh, was like, sure, I'll take your group on the river. And it was a group from the Work Activity Center. And they had an amazing time and kind of word of mouth spread, you know, hey, there's this group doing river trips down in Moab and anyone wow. can go. And it's just really come out of that. And we've been fortunate to have generous supporters throughout the years and great volunteers. and. 35 years later, here we are. Wow, that's terrific. Yeah. What uh, is web address and information on how people can get in touch with you guys? Splore.org. Okay. Uh, and it really has volunteer it's -E, information. It's S-P-L-O-R-E, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. 
And we have some photos too. Let, let me, uh, if we, we can get the producer to throw up a couple of photos real quick that we have. Um, uh, see if he has those here real quick. Oh, he already showed them. Okay, well, we were talking. See, I didn't even, I, I, I'm so enthralled. I didn't even <laughs> notice. This is such a great organization, and I'm really pleased that you could be here on the show to tell us more about it. Uh, and hopefully some people will uh, look at it as an opportunity because I, yeah. I think you've got to get out there and, you know, and enjoy your life and really, like I said, I, I really think for most people, uh, especially if you've got a disability, uh, it could be easy to sort of kind of cocoon yourself into a little, a little world when there's such a vast one out there you guys are excited to explore. Yeah, we'd love, really, and we're happy to work with anyone to find the perfect trip for them. So. Oh, great. Thank Thanks you. so much for being on the show, Janine. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more after these messages.